first and foremost, um, I would like to thank President Turner, um, Rick Hart, Susan, all the administration and the entire athletic department for this incredible opportunity to lead this program. Um, SMU is a special place. I was in Texas for 13 years. Um, they have great people, prestigious academics. Um, there's history and athletic tradition of success. Um, I can't wait to lead our women's basketball program and get us back to that championship level. Um, I couldn't be more excited to meet the team. Uh, I just got off a of Zoom with them and they were really excited. I'm ready to get to work. Um, I'm very passionate about the game. I bring energy every day. I want to bring joy back to this SMU women's basketball program. Um, we're going to recruit the right way. We're going to recruit the right student athletes that are winners and competitors on the court, um, committed students in the classroom, and have a tremendous work ethic and, and something that will make the university, the community, and the alumni proud. So I'm really excited to get started, roll my sleeves up, and um, get to campus and meet the team and um, get ready to uh, start this amazing journey. We'll start our Q&A, so a uh, reminder, if you have a question, to make sure you raise your hand. And the first question we have is from Sam Blum from the Dallas Morning News. Uh, hi, Toyo. Congratulations. It's uh, it's good to meet you. And if, Kerm, can you keep me unmuted? I have a, just a couple questions. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious about just this whole process. And, and uh, you know, I know, obviously, you guys were in San Antonio just a, a few days ago and, and thankfully got home safely. Yes. Um, what, uh, you know, how did this whole thing kind of play out over the last couple of days? Um, I mean, well, when we uh, lost our game in the Sweet 16, uh, uh, my agent reached out and I really was interested in the job as soon as I saw it was open. And um, for me, uh, even when I was at Baylor um, and that the last time around when it was available, I just didn't think I was ready yet. And and just the second time around, um, I've experienced more. I've learned so much. I've grown so much. And it's like a gold mine. SMU is in a gold mine. Every time I went up there to recruit in Dallas and you run through Highland Park and you see that campus, it's amazing. Um, it's an attractive campus. Um, there's a lot of similarities to Michigan as it is at SMU with the prestigious academics like I talked about and finding that student athlete that loves the game and loves to play basketball, but also has that same love um, and takes that commitment into the classroom. And um, I'm, I'm big on, on culture. I'm big on um, relationships. I'm big on um, communication. I'm going to be that for those kids. I'm a, I want to be a role model. I want to inspire. Um, and, and I just want to motivate them to love the game and be on that court and play as hard as they can every day, every practice, um, because I'm going to give off that. And I'm, a, and I'm committed to giving hundred percent every day. I think you referenced, you know, kind of bringing joy back to the program. And obviously, I mean, there's some documented issues that the, the program may have had over the last couple of years. Do you address this at all with them? I mean, do you address, you know, kind of what the, where the program has been the last couple of years? No, really, I mean, I can't control what's happened in the past. And for me, I want them to learn so much about me and who I am as a person um, and let them know. And I told them in, in a Zoom meeting we just had with them, I said, you know, a, a player doesn't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I like to know people, relationships matter. And I'm a connected coach. I'm a player's coach. Like, I love the connection and, and getting to know who these people really are besides on the basketball court. And so that was my job. That was the attraction of the job. I love challenges. Um, I want to go this way. And, and that's the only way we can go. So I'm so excited just to impact these kids so much. And more than just on the court, it's bigger than basketball. But again, for them to love the game, to have that joy. I play with fire. I play with passion. I coach with fire. I coach with passion. Um, I coach with joy. And I told them, I'm going to demand so much from you guys that you don't even think you know you have inside of you. But I'm also going to love on you. I'm going to care for you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to motivate you. And um, they were so excited. Every kid said they were two feet in and they were ready to go. All right. Next question is from Billy Embody from 24-7. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Dallas and congratulations on getting the job. Uh, Dallas, you mentioned running through campus and doing all of that. Uh, it's a pretty big hotbed of recruiting. What's your recruiting style? You know, you've, you've obviously landed a lot of quality players over the years. And, and how do you uh, restock the uh, talent pool here? For sure. I mean, the first thing is finding what makes SMU different. Uh, what, what's the difference maker and what sets us apart? First of all, it's the academics. Um, I think the conference is strong right now, getting two teams in, in postseason play and three and four teams and other types of postseason play. Um, I think the academics speak for itself. 
life after basketball, once those basketball shoes are hung up, um, finding the right student athlete that one, like I just said, loves to compete, loves to win. You got to find winners. You got to find people that are committed to the game, people that are committed in the classroom. Um, I'll surround myself with the best staff possible um, that has that similar vision um, and that are de determined and committed um, to, to get those talented players in here. But you know, and I'm sure you know this, at any program, the, the, the recruiting is a lifeline, the bloodline of, of a program. And so we got to find the great players, but not only great players, high character kids, kids that know what it takes to win, kids that are committed. And, and that's what I'm, I'm so excited to get, a whole new fresh start. I told the girls it's a fresh start, a fresh voice, a fresh energy. And they were just, I mean, through the through the uh, Zoom call, I could feel that they were already starting to connect and they've already been texting me and I can't wait to get off this call so I can uh, get, get started talking to each of them. Next question is from Stephen Hawkins with the Associated Press. Hey, Toyo, Stephen Hawkins. Uh, welcome back to Texas. Thank you. Hey, one, I, I know you, you've had the head coaching experience at Purview, but what have you learned in these assistant jobs that you've had at two very good schools that kind of make you better prepared even now? And, and what did you, you know, got out of those jobs? Um, for sure. Um, and first, first is uh, at Baylor. I just, the commitment, um, what it takes to be great, um, attention to detail, um, bringing out and demanding the most out of someone who doesn't even think they have it in them, um, competing at the highest level, execution, um, focus, um, all that at, at Baylor. And then at Michigan, just um, kind of like the love of me, the parallel of finding that, you know, that balance through finding kids that actually love the game, but also love the academic piece. And they always say leaders, leaders and best at Michigan. And um, these kids just are so passionate, great culture, um, great culture kids, great relationship kids. Um, they come into the office and they want to know what's going on before, like just regularly. Well, how are you doing, Coach T? Um, and, and so much about Michigan is, is the, you know, the power five and, and same with ba Baylor. And, you know, the Big Ten and Big 12 are totally different, but recruiting the Midwest and, and recruiting kids in the, uh, in the East Coast and kids on the West Coast. Um, so for me, it's just that that competitive fire, that commitment to the total package. Uh, so I just learned so much in these last eight years of being an assistant coach. I couldn't, I, I didn't even realize I was a head coach at, at Prairie View without knowing so much that I've learned from, from Coach Mulkey and Coach um, barnes Rico. Our next question is from Steve Lansdale with Pony Fans. Coach, welcome to Dallas. Um, do you arrive with a coaching staff already intact in your mind, or is that a process that begins now, reaching out to potential assistants? Yes, that's a process that begins now. Um, I have a, a, a potential list that I've already established and wrote and had typed up um, before I even got announced and even got offered the job. So um, you got to, uh, they always say you got to stay ready you don't, so you don't have to get ready. So I already had a, a, a potential list. And now tomorrow I'm going to dedicate that to, to calling these potential people. Um, and, and they're great coaches, great people, again, of high character that know what it takes that can recruit the total package, um, not just the best student. But I mean, not just the best athlete, but the, the best student athlete. Next question back to Sam Blum. You know, I'm, I'm curious if you can kind of rewind. I think it was when we were 28, 29, uh, taking that first head coaching job. What was that whole thing like? And then how does it feel different today, maybe? Yeah, um, I think for me, I was so um, nervous because. I was like, am I ready to be a head coach at 25? You know, I, I didn't know if I was ready. But the president and the AD said, no, we see how you go walk around this campus. You relate to the lunch lady. You relate to the janitor. You relate to the teachers. You relate to the people. You're a people person. We saw what you do behind the closed doors. We know you're ready for your moment. And when I started coaching, I was like, oh, wow, like I do have that voice. I do have that fire and that passion. I can bring that out of student athletes. So for me, I was more nervous and anxious. Was that was was I ready? Now I'm like chomping at the bit. And, and for me, it's about a right fit. It's about the right connection. It's about the right resources, it's about the right people. And when I was talking to A.D. Hart and 
everybody, Maria and Susan and, and, and Mr. Evans. And when I was talking to everyone, what I felt was that it was a family atmosphere. I felt that they really wanted someone that come in here that can have a relationship with these players, that connect with these players, that can pull the best out of these players. And for me, that's how I am. I'm passionate, how I talk, how I practice, how I coach. But I also know, you know, I can give a kid a pat on the back because I can give them two positives to a negative or I can get motivate a kid where they think they don't even can do it. Um, so for me, I'm ready for this moment. I'm ready to shine. I'm ready for get to get SMU women's basketball with that pride and that joy and mostly that pride and, and, and what alumni are proud to, to watch and have good product on the court. Um, you know, I, I joked with uh, A.D. Hart, I said, I'm going to have to, you know, give out some pizza to get people in the stands. But guess what? In a couple of years, people are going to be coming for the product on the court, not for the free pizza. So I'm so excited about that. And, and just where we can go, it's like limitless. I'm just so excited. Next question back to Steve Lansdale. Coach, there are certain programs and coaches around the country that are readily identifiable by the way they play. Are there characteristics of teams that you coach that will be immediately visible to the fans? Well, I've learned so much from where I've been for all my stops, Robert Morris, Prairie View, Baylor, Michigan. I've been fortunate enough to learn from so many different coaches, coaches that value offense, some coaches that value defense. I'm a defensive a coach, so I'm going to play man to man. I love to be aggressive. Um, I love to be in passing lanes. Um, I love to be uh, take charges. I'm about energy. I'm about your defense, create your offense. Um, offensively, obviously, I got to watch more film on each player and see what they kind of bring to the table. Um, obviously, but I'll recruit to what the kind of system I want to run and, and what I, how I want to play. But I definitely want to get to all the strengths that the kids have right now that are on the team and mix and try and get some kids in here that can mix and mingle with what we have and um, try and get some good product on the court. Um, but these kids are talented now. I know some of the kids from when I was recruiting and watching games and watching other kids. And so I know some talent, there's some talent on the team and I'm just excited to get them on the court and, and get and bring that to fruition. Next question back to Billy Embody. Hey, Coach, you mentioned uh, passing out pizzas to get uh, people in the stands. How much do you want to be, you know, a figure on campus in a way and, and engaging with the with the student body and um, just all the things that it, it takes to, you know, these days get people from the couch watching on TV maybe to uh, Moody? Yeah, Billy, that's so important. That is 100% important to me. Um, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be in the community. I want to be seen. I want to be heard. I want to start a brand of um, a brand for the women's basketball team. Um, you know, the thing is, I said the free pizza, but I want to go and, and talk and, and go anywhere where I can really, really sell our program. And so that these people know and our fans and that they know what we're about, what, what I'm going to be about, what our team's going to be about. Um, I'm just really excited to get out and get into the community. I'm big on community service. I'm big. I'm, I'm selfless. Um, so I'm big on all that kind of stuff. I believe in all that. And, and that teaches those kids, you know, being selfless and, and being out and being out in the community. It's bigger than basketball. So I'm really excited. The next question is from Sam Blum. Yeah, you know, obviously, I, I think I saw it in the SMU statement that, uh, you know, you're the first female uh, black head coach at the school. And I'm curious if, you know, if that history matters to you, if that means something to you. And, and if so, you know, how would you kind of just describe that? Sam, that definitely matters. I mean, for all those young um, black women that are playing, um, that are not that are younger than not even playing in high school or just young kids growing up, that they can be whatever they want to be. They can do whatever they want to do. I didn't even know that until the SAC, um, they they uh, tagged me in that. So, I mean, that's a blessing that I'm humbled. I'm appreciative. I'm excited. Um, hopefully I'm not the last, but I'm here to stay for a while. I'm here for the long haul. So I'm just so excited. I, that's just amazing. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, it, it's just a blessing. I'm just, I'm overjoyed and I'm so happy. And now another question from Steve Lansdale. Coach, you talked about expanding your reach and visibility both on campus and in the community. And I'm wondering if all of that is focused on looking forward or if that also includes reaching out to alumni of the program some of whom may be coaches as well but bringing them back into the fold the alumni are most important i mean those are the people that kind of paved the way that, that did their turn they set the foundation 
Um, I talked to, to Coach Rhonda earlier, and I just told her how what she did in those 20 something years at SMU was unbelievable because it's not so hard to it's hard to get there, but it's even harder to sustain to be up here. And so when I spoke to her, I just thanked her for what she's done to for the history of our program. And I want to get back to where that history is where people want to talk about SMU women's basketball, that that we're buzzing in people's ears, we're buzzing on TVs, we're buzzing in the community, in the newspapers. I'm so excited to get us back and I'm willing to do anything um, in the community to, to start that that connection with our alumni. I told um, A.D. Hart that we we just did, and even here in Michigan, before we played our, our Sweet 16 game, um, we had our alumni come on and talk to the kids because that's important. They're saying, like, I see you've done it. You've endured all that. You endured the ups and downs. And so um, I'm just so excited to get the alumni um, started and get them connected with our current players to get that, like I said, to get that passion and then that love and that hard work and that commitment back. And our last question, one more for Steve Lansdale. Um, yeah, your your counterpart across the hall, Tim Jankovic, talked about how, at least in the men's game, he sees the transfer portal being sort of a wild west and huge numbers this year. I'm wondering if you see that unfolding in the women's game as well, and if so, how you balance that with freshmen as far as your recruiting and acquisition of talent. Yeah, I think, you know, the transfer portal is – kind of bumping right now and booming and you know just with these kids able to play right away and and just with this year being a mulligan year um having transfers helps you in a few ways it can help and hurt but help you with obviously with that experience um when when you get kids that already have that college experience it really helps you they know what to expect they know what it takes on in practice they know what it takes um in games um you know you want to get the right type of kid though you don't want to just settle for anyone you want to make sure that kid's a good culture kid that kid's not about themselves they're about we not about me um so with with me you know that's another big thing i have to to, to look at and, and kind of evaluate the, the team we have and and see who's all in and, and see who's kind of teetering and who's ready to go to work but i'm just excited to uh get on campus meet the team uh, meet the whole athletic department. I mean, because we did the whole Zoom thing, but I'm ready to be in person um, and get started and, and get this program where it needs to be. And here's our last one. Sorry, I missed one hands from Sam Blum. And I, just, I wanted to actually go back. You, I saw your tweets about the flight that you guys took to get back to Michigan. What was, I mean, what kind of happened there? And I mean, just how does it all kind of play into just a whirlwind uh, couple of days that you, you've had probably? <laughs> yeah, so they had us leave right after our game. So we, we finished around five and eight. Said it flights at eight, so be downstairs at 6 30. We get to the airport, everybody buckles up, we get up in the air, and there's a storm. And um, they get on the speaker and they say, We're gonna make an emergency landing in Evansville, Indiana. And so we were like, Okay, and they said, um, you know, we're going from 35,000 feet down to 5,000 feet pretty quickly. So the masks are gonna drop. Please place them over your fit, your nose and mouth. Um, the big thing I think I think what happened is it was uh, we got a lightning strike. And um, because it was a lot of lightning out the window every second. And I think we were just in the storm, we got caught. Um, But it wasn't like a nosedive, it was more like a descent very quickly in our ears. That was the big thing. Um, Your ears were piercing. And so um, that was the probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And I couldn't hear. So we got so we sat in Evansville from 11 p.m. to 3:30 in the morning. And they asked us, hey, if you guys want to get on a bus. You don't feel comfortable, let's get on a bus. If you want to take the one-hour flight, you can get a one-hour flight, and whoever wants to get in a rental car, we can get in a rental car. So we gave that option to all the team. Um, we all end up getting on the plane, um, and the girls, they handled it really well. The pilot handled it well. They were just scared. You know, They didn't know what to expect, so they were kind of, some of them were crying. Some of them were praying with the rosary, three of them. Um, but they were holding hands and stuff. And it wasn't really like it was we I never felt threatened for my life. It's just that descent was very quick. Um, we end up getting back 630 in the morning on uh, Sunday and I went to sleep all day. And that's when I got the email back um, from Susan saying that, you know, we want to do the interview and, and see if we can um, get going. So I didn't want to get on a flight, but we did everything on a Zoom and um, everything from there was just I would say is magic after that.